Have I ever mentioned that I'm not especially fond of these DMS-59 dual-link DVI display connectors? Why yes, I believe that I have. Hello there everyone, UXW Bill here once again with yet another incredibly exciting video. And I mean it, uh, this is the stuff that Blockbuster Entertainment is made of right here. <laughs> That's right, I'm testing out another one of these Dell Optiplex machines, the story of which is given just a few videos prior to this one. I've already worked on the GX620 and discovered that it uh, simply had a problem with uh, memory sockets being full of crud, keeping the memory modules from making good connections. But it'll need to have new capacitors installed on at least part of the motherboard before it can be put into any kind of regular use. I have gone ahead and moved up to the best equipped of the three Optiplex 760 series machines that I acquired. This one is equipped with a 3 GHz Intel Core 2 Duo E8400 microprocessor, 4 GB of DDR2 memory, an ATI Radeon 3450 graphics processor, and no hard drive. That's right, they took the hard drive out of this one, or maybe it didn't come with one. It's very hard to tell. I don't know the actual functional state of this machine. All I know for sure is that the note on the front says, Three flashes, intermittent motherboard error. Now I suspect that might mean something could be loose or jarred around inside this system. I haven't actually tried powering it up yet, but as you can see I've got my DMS-59 to uh, analog dual monitor VGA adapter hooked up here, ready to go ahead and give things a try. Now, back when I got the Optiplex 745 for a dollar, which is sitting back there with a keyboard on top of it, I discovered that the graphics card was loose. It wouldn't surprise me if the majority of the errors on these machines might have something to do with that, as the only thing holding the graphics card in is this none too substantial easy release mechanism over here. And I suspect that if the graphics card is not making good contact with the PCI Express 16 lane slot on the system board, that all kinds of screwy behavior could be the result. So let's go ahead, plug this in, and see what happens. I've also got the keyboard over here. I'll go ahead and plug that into a convenient USB port. And we'll just go ahead and see what this machine does. I don't have a whole lot of experience with the Optiplex 760. Okay, it just powered up for a moment. I heard a relay click. I heard uh, the main system fan start up. I heard the video card fan get to spinning. I really hope that video card fan is thermally controlled because I can't see it living too long if it spins at full throttle like that all the time. Got the flat panel display hooked up over here. Let's go ahead and uh, turn this thing on. Now, unfortunately, I don't have enough room to have the power button within easy reach. But we'll go ahead and just press the... Uh, if I can find it. <laughs> Press the power button on the front of the system. My gosh. I know these things better than that. It's got to be here someplace. Alright. Well, it's powering up for right now at least. Of course, sometimes all you need in order to convince these things that you mean business is just a good car ride home. You know, it'll jar whatever's not making good contact into working again temporarily. It's not too happy about its hard drive, so let's run the setup utility. Let's see, I hit the F2 key. Why doesn't it go ahead and... There we go, there we go. I just wasn't being patient enough. Wow! I did not know the Optiplex 60 used this new graphical setup system that Dell was supplying on... Uh... I know it's up to the, the Optiplex 900 series. I don't know if this is what they're using currently, but I installed one of those about two years ago, I think, for one of my clients. And I was very surprised by the uh, graphical nature of the setup utility. I also wondered if maybe it was resident on the hard drive, but it clearly can't be because this system hasn't got a hard drive. Go ahead and take a look at some of the configuration things here. The BIOS version is A15. I'll have to see if there's a newer version of that. At the MAC address, this system dates from 2008. There's the amount of memory installed for one gigabyte modules. A little bit of de uh, detailed information on the microprocessor. Six megabytes of L2 cache, wow. 64-bit capable, of course. Doesn't support, um, I believe SMT would be something to do with symmetric multiprocessing, though I'm not sure of that. Could very well have that wrong. And then just two PCI slots available on this machine. 
The date and time actually appear to be pretty close to correct on this one. They weren't on the GX620, but I suppose maybe it could use a new battery, especially if it's been sitting around for somewhere. There is an option I want to play with, the, play with on this machine. I've got to go ahead and find it here. I'm not sure, not sure where it is. Fan control override. Yes, that's it. Earlier, if you watched my previous video where I went through these machines and I talked a little bit about how I came to have them, well, you'd notice that the, uh, fr the front panel fan in these BTX Dell systems is absolutely massive, and I've never heard one running at full speed. But the system BIOS will, for whatever reason, let you choose to override the thermally operated nature of the fan and run it at full speed. It says, warning, the system fan is very loud at full speed. So I suppose that if there is a point to this video, <laughs> this would probably be it. I just have to hear how um, <laughs> astoundingly loud this probably is. So I'm going to go ahead and apply the setting. I don't know if that's enough to actually make the system go ahead and do it. It might need to reboot. So let's go ahead and just exit setup. See what happens here. It might be good, it might be bad. It would probably be interesting. Oh, it's ramping up. <laughs> it's a nice touch that they choose to just smoothly accelerate it like that. Wow. That's definitely one way to get the dust bunnies out of a computer. <laughs> run the fan at the absolute maximum speed. It's really not as terribly loud as I thought it would be, though. I guess I ought to go ahead and put it back on the automatic setting. Sure does take its time to decide it's going to go into setup. All right, let's see, where was that option? Right here under power management. Go ahead and turn that off. Apply the setting. Exit setup. And since it offers an option to go into a miniature diagnostic mode, I figure if I can set this thing up such that it might be willing to run those diagnostics in a loop, I can find out for sure whether or not this system is actually working properly, or if it has some kind of a bizarre fault. So thank you for watching, and feel free to leave a comment if you have one.